Hey, this is Mr. Aiden. We are still in Chapter 6, Additional Topics in Trigonometry. We're in Section 6.3, which is called Vectors in a Plane. Not snakes on a plane, but vectors in a plane. And the coolest thing about this chapter is, if you remember back to physics, you can do vectors. Okay, vectors are super easy. I actually think we should be doing vectors in elementary school because they're that easy. And what is a vector? A vector is... is is something that has a magnitude and a direction. If you remember back to physics, uh, vectors like velocity, like displacement, like force, acceleration, momentum, these are all vectors. They have magnitude, which is a fancy word for number, and a direction. It has an angle as well. And I hope you can see right here, uh, now in old kind of uh, geometry, we would call this we would call this a line segment. We would call this a PQ, okay? We don't call that anymore. PQ, we call that vector V, okay? Vector V is from this initial point, from the initial point, all the way to this, what we call terminal point, terminal point. And I hope you can see this vector V has a magnitude, it has a length, okay, and it has a direction. Remember, what is a scalar quantity? A sc scalar quantity is just its 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 length, okay. So let's say this vector V is eight meters long, okay, and it is at an angle of 50 degrees, okay. That means it is a vector, okay. What would be the scalar quantity of this vector v? It would just be 8 meters. It's just 8 meters, but we call that vector v. Okay. Now, I hope you can see, if this is 8 meters, if I take this vector and I double this, if I do 2 times v, that, that ends up being 16 meters. It took this vector and it doubled it. It did two of these vectors together, and now it's 16 meters. Okay. And so if, if, let's say I call this positive 8 meters, okay? Now, if I flip this around, it would be negative 8 meters, wouldn't it? Okay, so the opposite of that vector would be negative 8 meters. I could also do one half of this vector, and one half of this vector would cut this vector in half, and that would be, uh, obviously, plus 4 meters. And so you can see this vector has the ability, you can see if this is my standard of positive 8 meters for vector v, I can do one half of vector v, which is four meters. I can flip it around. I can do all these different things because any vector has magnitude and direction. So let's take a look. Let's take a look at equivalent directed line segments. So we have uh, point P is at zero, zero. I'm going to call that point P. Point Q is at three, two right here. And so this gives what's called vector u. We're going to call that vector u right there. Now, how can we figure out what the magnitude of vector u is? Well, vector u has an x direction. Hopefully you can see its x direction is 3. Its y direction is 2. Okay, so if I do 3 squared plus 2 squared equals that hypotenuse squared, that hypotenuse squared, we're doing uh, our um, Pythagorean theorem. Hopefully you can see it's broken up into an x component and a y component uh, and that are, that is the components of this vector u. And so if I just do this for us, let's take a look. We have 3 squared, that's 9 plus 4, 25. No, sorry, I did that wrong on my calculator. 3 squared plus 2 squared and I'm gonna square root that ends up being square root of 13. So vector u ends up being have a magnitude, okay, and we're gonna have a a little uh, symbol for magnitude, is a double double line on each side, is the square root of 13. Okay, so the magnitude of that is the square root of 13. Now, it is also at some angle as well, okay, so it is at some angle as well, and we're gonna figure out how to figure out this angle. Actually, I'll, I'll tell you how to figure out this angle right now might as well. We'll figure out in this video anyway. So tangent of your angle always equals your y, your y is 2, over your x, which is 3. So 2 thirds. So to find the angle, we're going to do arc tangent of 2 over 3. So if I do arc tan of 2 thirds, I end up getting 33.7 degrees. So this is 
at 33.7 degrees. Okay, so I know not only the magnitude of this, which is root 13, but I also know the direction, which is 33.7 degrees. Okay, now let's take a look. We also have another line segment, don't we? This other line segment is at starts at R, 1, 2. Okay, I'm going to do R, and goes to 4, 4, right here, 4, 4, and that's S. It has, this is your vector. Now take a look at this vector. This vector is made up of an X component, and it's made up of a Y component, okay? Oh, X component, a Y component, and we're gonna call this vector V, right? Vector V. So what do we know about vector V? Well, that X component is three, that Y component is two, which gives vector V ends up being root 13 as well. Two over three, or tangent, that's at 33.7 degrees, which means these are parallel vectors as well as equivalent vectors, aren't they? Because they have the same magnitude, they have the same direction, and so not only are they equal to each other in terms of magnitude, but they are also equal to each other in terms of direction as well, okay? And that is vector V. Again, what are our equations? Our equations are basically the Pythagorean theorem, isn't it? The magnitude of the vector, which is this double line, that magnitude is the scalar quantity. I'll say that again. The magnitude is the scalar quantity, okay? Uh, that's the, the, the magnitude, the number without the direction, okay? Now, the, making it a vector, it also has a direction as well. And we have what's called a component form. Okay, some people call it a component. I call it a component. Okay, so because of my Philly accent, so the component form is it's made up of an X and a Y, and we put these little uh, brackets around them as well. So let me give you an example of what I mean by that. We have an initial point of four negative seven. So we have four negative seven right here. That's our initial point. Our terminal point is negative one and five, negative one and five right here, okay? And so we have a vector, and I'm not gonna be able to draw this, so let's do a, an arrow from here to here. There's my vector, and I'm gonna call that vector V, okay, vector V. So, again, to find my component form, I need to find my X value, okay? So I can take this X value, and you can see I'm starting at an x value of 4, and I'm going to an x value of negative 1, which means I'm going negative 5, aren't I? Negative 5. That is my x value. My y value, I start at negative 7, and I go all the way up to 5. So I have to go up 7 and 5, which is 12. And so my vector v is equal to negative 5, 12. That is what we call the component form. The component form is basically the x value and the y value of that vector v. Now how would we find the magnitude of vector v is I would do the Pythagorean theorem. F negative 5 squared plus 12 squared, okay? So you have 25 plus 144, that's 169, that's your 5, 12, 13 triangle. So our magnitude is 13 there, 13, okay? So this magnitude of this vector is equal to 13. So uh, component form is basically your x, y. Your magnitude is the Pythagorean theorem, okay? Now we have different vector operations. We can add vectors together. We can also multiply by vectors. I kind of already showed you this multiplying by a vector of multiplying by two. What happens to your x and y if we multiply by two? Well, it multiplies the x by two and the y by two. If you multiply by three, it multiplies the x by three and the y by three. If you multiply by half, it multiplies the x and the y by half, okay? And it makes your vector smaller. Now, we can also add vectors up, okay? What I mean by that is this. Let's say we have u, we have v, okay? u is right here. And let's let's say we want to do u, vector u plus vector v, okay? Well, vector u, you can see I'm going to do that right there, okay? And the vector v is this vector right there. You can add what's called tail to the tip. You can see vector v, his tail, is going to go to the tip of the u, which means now that gives us a brand new vector from here to here which let's say we call that vector w, okay? So this is equal to vector w. And so 
uh, vector w is right here. Okay, oh, I didn't want to do that. Vector w is right here. You can see how big that is. Now, what do we know about something like 2 plus 3? It also equals 3 plus 2. This is why I think teaching vectors in elementary school is really good. It teaches all those operations. So let's say we did do v plus u. V plus u. Let's say we take this v, which is down here, and we add u to that tail to tip. Okay. Well, that gives us a vector from here to here. Look at this vector. It's the same vector, isn't it? It's equal to w, which means u plus v, 2 plus 3, equals 3 plus 2. It, it works out in what we call vector form vector form. Now let's say we had u minus v. So we have vector u, vector u is right here, okay, and we're going to subtract v. Well what does it mean in terms of vectors if we subtract? Well that means it flips this vector totally around, doesn't it? Okay, and I did not do it totally around. There we go. Almost, almost, there we go. That's not bad. So you can see how hopefully you can see that vector v is totally flipped around. And so again, you go tail to tip, tail to tip right there, which means that gave us a new vector, which was right here. And so u minus v flips around the vector, and that gives us our new vector, which we could call w or, or, or x or b or whatever you want to call it. Okay, now do you see how if we do u minus v, it's not the same, it's not equal to v minus u because we're flipping a different vector, aren't we? Which means 3 minus 2 is not equal to 2 minus 3, is it? Okay, and so you can see how that is how we add vectors graphically as well as algebraically. So let's, let's take a look at a little bit of a few problems. So here, for a, we have 2 times vector v. What do we know vector v is? It's negative 2, 5. That's our x, our y, which means 2v would be equal to negative 4, 10, wouldn't it? It would double the x, and it would double the y. Let's take a look at w minus v. Okay, so w, we have 3, 4, okay, and we're going to subtract v, which means that's like adding the flipped version of this. And so that at, makes that positive 2, negative 5. Does that make sense? So it flipped this vector v when it was negative, and so now we can add those together, and that equals 5 in the x, negative 1 in the y right there. Okay. Let's take a look at this one. We have vector v. Vector v is by him. He's, he's regular. He's 2, 5. Okay, we're going to add 2 times w, so we're going to add 6 and 8, aren't we? Which gives us 4 and 13 in the x and the y. Okay, And last but not least, let's take a look at this guy right here. We have 2 times v, which means we're going to double the v vector, which means he's negative 4, 10. Minus, which means we're going to add 3 times this flipped vector. So the flipped vector would be negative 3, negative 4, but we're going to triple that. So we got negative 9, negative 12, and now we can add these up. Negative 4 and negative 9 is negative 13. Positive 10, negative 12 is negative 2, and that is this new vectored form. Okay, so vector operations is pretty easy. You're going back to what you did before. We also have a thing called unit vectors. So unit vectors, uh, is a scalar quantity, okay? Which means it is just a, a magnitude. So let's say vector u has a magnitude of one, and is in the same direction as as v. Vector u is called the unit vector in the direction of v. Unit vector in the direction of v. So the unit vector is equal to vector v over the magnitude, and that is what's called the unit vector. Okay, so let me give you an example of a unit vector right here. Our unit vector, we want to find a unit vector in the direction of v, okay, of negative 2, 5, that has, uh, and verify that the result is a magnitude of 1. So let's take a look at my magnitude of vector v is going to be the square root of negative 2 squared plus 5 squared and we end up getting root 29, root 29. 
Okay. So what do we know is if we want to find the unit vector, we're going to put the the unit vector. We're going to take uh, negative two five, and we're going to divide that by the magnitude root twenty nine. Okay. And so what are we going to end up getting? We're going to end up getting negative two over root twenty nine, five over root twenty nine, which when we would, if we would uh, rationalize that, we would get negative 2 root 29 over 29 and 5 root 29 over 29 and that is what's called my unit vector. Now you might be like, what in the world is a unit vector, Mr. Aiden, again? It is that. It's kind of like the percentage. It's kind of like saying, let's say everything is equal to 1. Every vector is equal to 1. So we have a vector v. It's negative 2, 5, which means it's got negative 2 in the x. It's got 5 in the y. I, I drew that awful already. So let's say we have negative 2 in the x, and we have 5 in the y. That's, there we go, 5 in the y, which means we have a vector that looks like this. Okay, this vector v is negative 2 in the x, positive 5 in the y. Now, let's say we turn this into the a, a proportion that we say vector v is 1. Well, if vector v is just one unit long, okay, it's kind of like uh, making that the standard. Okay, it would be like you saying, I am the standard of weight, and my weight is one unit. And so everything is based upon me, the king. And so if someone is twice my weight, they are two me's, two units of me. So what the unit vector does is it takes this vector and puts it into this magnitude of one right here. Okay, Which means if we took this guy and this guy, if we took... Uh, if we took negative 2 root 29 over 29 and we squared him <clears throat> plus 5 root 29 over 29 and squared this bad boy and did the square root, you would end up seeing you would equal 1. Okay, which means a unit vector basically turns everything into a, a percentage form, a fractional form of one unit long. Now, not only do we have our component form, so let's say we have a component. Let's say we have a vector v, which is uh, 3, 5. Okay, 3 units in the x, <clears throat> 5 units in the y, okay, which means that's my vector v. Well, we have another name for this, which is called the linear combination, is 3i and 5j. Okay, so i really just stands for x, j really stands for y, it's kind of the mathematician's way of doing x's and y's. Okay, uh, in physics we use x's and y's. In math we use i, j's, and k's if we're doing a z dimension right there. Okay, so it is stinking easy. So our initial point is two in the x. Terminal point is negative one. So if we start at two and we go to negative one, how far did we go? We went negative three, didn't we? If we start at negative 5 and we go all the way to 3, we've gone 8 units in the y. That is vector u. Vector u is 3 units in, negative 3 units in the x, 8 units in the y, which means if I did the Pythagorean theorem, I would end up getting 9 plus 8 squared, which is root 73, so the magnitude of unit of, of u is root 70. 73. Okay? <clears throat> That's the magnitude of u. Now, if I wanted to write this in what's called linear combination, this vector u would be negative 3i plus 8j. And that would be its linear combination. So this is called component form. This is called linear combination right there. Okay? Which means, let's say, uh, u is negative 3i plus 8j, vector v is 2i minus j, and we want to find 2u. So what is 2u? That would be negative 6i plus 16j <clears throat> minus 3v. So what is 3v? 3 times v would be 6i minus 3j, 
Now, if it was negative 3v, that would make him negative and him positive. <clears throat> Which means this added up together would be negative 12i plus 19j. And that's what 2u minus 3v would be in terms of linear combination. If we put this in terms of component form, it would just look like that. Okay, Pretty easy, right? Pretty easy. Which means we've already talked about how do we find out the magnitude? Well, how do we do the magnitude? Well, we take a look in the x direction. We take a look at the y direction. We use the Pythagorean theorem. 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared, which means the magnitude would be 5. How would we find out the angle? We would put the y value over the x value, and that equals tangent of theta. We do arctangent to figure out the angle of that component which means if we want to find out the direction of each vector. So um, what I like to do is I like to draw a little triangle. We are positive 3 in the i, positive 3 in the j, which means that we're in the first quadrant right here. So to find the direction angle, we have tangent of theta equals 3, that's the y, over 3, that's the x. So arctangent of 1 ends up being 45 degrees, so your angle is 45 degrees right there. Okay, let's take a look at another vector. We're going to go positive 3 in the x, negative 4 in the y, which means we're in this fourth quadrant right here. So we're trying to find that angle right there. So again, we use tangent of theta equals what's your y value? Your y value is 4, your x value is 3. Now you might say, Mr. Aiden, what? It's negative 4, okay? Yeah, it is negative 4, okay? But remember, your calculator really only does things in the first quadrant. So we have 4 thirds, we do our tangent of that, and we end up getting 53.1 degrees. Now that is 53.1 degrees right here. What is the true angle from here to here is 360 degrees minus that, 360 degrees minus 53.1, which ends up being 306.9 degrees. That's the true angle that would give you your linear combination right there. And let's say we have this guy. We know this plane is flying at 200 degrees. Can you see how the true angle is 200 degrees? And it's flying at a, a magnitude of 150. So if you remember back to physics, what in physics that we did is we said the x component, the x component is equal to the magnitude, 150, what we called vr, <coughs> cosine of my angle, cosine of 200 degrees. And so we do 150 cosine of 200 degrees. We end up getting negative 140.95 miles per hour. Okay, which means, can you see that that makes sense? Do you see how that's about 140? Okay, we're going in the negative direction in the x. Now, how do we figure out the y component? The y component is, if you remember back to physics, VR sine of the angle, so 150 sine of 200 degrees, 150 sine of 200 ends up giving you negative 51.3 miles per hour, which means, do you see how the y value is negative as well? That's giving you in this third quadrant right here. The third quadrant is going to have a negative in the x and a negative in the y, which means if we looked at the component form, that would be negative 140.95 miles per hour and negative 51.3 miles per hour, and that is the component form of my vector. So if you want to find the component form, you need the magnitude and the direction. If you want to find the angle, you need two of your sides, and that is vectors on an airplane, section 6.3.